Hello everybody, welcome back to Ross IELTS Academy, special edition of our speaking game. Now this is the final part of our part two game situation where we give each other cue cards. Mm -hmm. I'm Samson Sees and she is... Mary Mushafi from Ross IELTS Academy. We're both instructors but we decided to play this game not only to understand how it feels to be in the speaking situation of yeah, IELTS. Yeah, the real situation under exam conditions. Absolutely under the exam conditions with a bit of fun on the side but also to give you guys some really useful techniques and tips of the trade mm -hmm. so you can get through this part with a lot more ease. Yeah, and in these videos you can just see nobody is perfect. No one's perfect. And we are the examiners, we are the instructors, but we sometimes get confused, we don't know what to talk about. The only thing you should know is to how to manage everything and how to come up with some ideas, apply the techniques that we are teaching you. So maybe you would like to visit our website for more techniques. We have some wonderful courses for you, bronze, silver and VIP courses, right? VIP, oh VIP, yes. Yeah. Don't forget the VIP. Mm -hmm. it's, it's all very useful stuff. So you get plenty yeah. of support and know exactly what you're doing when you want to go into the real IELTS exam. Yeah. Now, and Samson, what can our candidates or the people watching this video do to watch more videos and get a better score? Oh, you're right. I almost forgot. You need to like, subscribe to our channel. And we have some special packages, actually, special rewards for people who do that. And mm -hmm. we'll talk about that another time. And we have time. lots of new videos for you. So definitely go ahead and like and subscribe. It's just a click away. Yep. Brilliant stuff. Now, do you have anything else to tell our dear candidates? Yes, yes. So, uh, since this is our last video on the Q card, Q -card game, part two, yep. yes, I have some tips for the candidates, for people watching this video. As you might have watched the previous videos, the three yep. videos on part one and the two videos on part two, you may remember that we talked about the tips that you have to know, the strategies you should apply in part two when you want to cover the cue card. The most important thing is that you will have two minutes to talk about the cue card. Two Just minutes. The, this is exactly what we are going to do right now. And you should cover all the bullet points in two minutes, not less. Yeah, we, were, we keep repeating the two minutes because you hear it on many YouTube videos as well. Talk for one to two minutes. It's not one to two minutes. It's two minutes and exactly. then the examiner will stop you when the time is over. So mm -hmm. there's no problem with that, just as yeah. long as you cover everything. Mm -hmm. And right. you should also make sure to use a range of complex structures. You should know that if you only use a combination of simple and complex structures, you will get a six in your grammar. But you are but if you are able to use a you know range of complex structures, That's you will right. get a seven in your grammar, which is wonderful. So try to practice that and make sure you feel comfortable with it. Don't do something you're not comfortable with because mm -hmm. you will sound more unnatural and make a lot more mistakes and errors and probably fall off the rails. You don't want to do yes. that. Yes, and also you should try to use a range of vocabulary, some collocations, but no fancy word. No, no fancy. Try not to memorize fancy words. That's mm -hmm. what we always try to tell candidates. Memorizing mm -hmm. stuff, you know, that would definitely... We will know. The examiners The examiners will know. know. Sorry. Sorry about that, but you know, you guys can get through this with all these necessary tips mm -hmm. and techniques. So you should just be able to speak naturally. The examiner should see the flow of a speech like you're talking without any, you know, language related That's hesitation. Right. You shouldn't be pausing and saying, um, mm, I don't know, I don't know how to answer the question. Yeah, that's not Have good. Have you ever been faced with such situation or such candidates? Oh yes, I've, I see them quite a few times. Well, not all the time, but there are a few candidates. They're doing well with their idea. They're, they're telling the story and then they suddenly run out of things to say. And, and they, what do they say? They pause and they say, hmm, oh, I don't know. I'm no. sorry, I don't know how to answer. If you do that, you're going to be marked down. Avoid we totally that. understand. We, understand. we totally understand you're under a lot of pressure. Immense pressure and probably you're feeling a little bit stressed out. But there are ways to manage those stressful Buy times. Buy some time. That's right. To sound natural. Warm right? up before the test probably. Warm up your voice. Speak up. If you speak assertively, sit up straight and face your examiner just like a normal human being because that's what they are. They're yes. just marking you down on the four criteria. Mm -hmm. So don't be too stressed out. Control the stress. When you speak loudly, the stress levels come down. It's a very useful technique. Try exactly. that. Exactly. Yep. All right. So can so we get it started? Let's get started. Yeah, we're going to play the game here. All right. Can I go first? 
Ladies first. Of course you okay. can go first. All right, okay. so shall I open so, the box yes, for you? Yes, yes, together. Ooh, lots oh. of cue cards again. Okay, so I should now pick one, talk about the topic just like a real candidate. Just like a real candidate. But test. if I decide to skip the topic... She'll have to forfeit and I'll have to ask her a personal question. Yes, so you can ask me a personal question if I skip. If she skips. Let's see what topic I can find. Go ahead. The cue card I pick. Okay. You got one? Yep. You got one. Here okay. You go. I'm going to read it out. Now, Manush topic, here it goes. Describe a memorable journey you have made. Ooh. Okay. Memorable journey you have made. You ready to I can to talk about it? it. Yeah, yeah. I have I have had a lot of different experiences, different trips, so I can okay, talk about Okay, so one. I'm going to give you this cue card. Okay. And I would need Pen and paper. Sure. Actually, you're going to need, you're gonna need too, it. Yeah. You're gonna so you can <laughs> analyze me? Yes. No, first, yeah, you can, I'll have the piece of paper. You have the pen and paper, yes, so yes. make notes. That's what, that's something you guys could do too. Just make notes, get a pen and paper. Yeah, just get a pen and paper Practice. Right now. Practice mm -hmm. with us. Okay, so Mehmush now has one minute to make notes, mm -hmm. and I'm going to give her that time limit. Three, two, one, go ahead. Okay. Okay, that's the one minute up. Mm -hmm. You may start speaking for the two minutes. That's right, thank you You're very welcome. much. Here the cue card, and now I'm going to make notes of what Manish is going to do. So you have two minutes, you ready? Yes. Up for it? Okay, mm -hmm. here we go. Three, two, one, go ahead. Okay, so I would like to talk about a trip I took. Uh, it was about three years ago, I guess. Um, I decided to go to South Korea, Seoul, because I was awarded a scholarship from the university when I was a bachelor student. And because of that, um, I remember it was the last semester of my studies. I'm, I'm not sure if it was three years ago, but yeah, it was a couple of years ago. So I uh, just uh, you know, decided to t take the opportunity and go on this trip. And uh, after I went through the visa process and all that stuff, I found myself in the airport, getting on the airplane and uh, thinking about a new future and some different plans for my, uh, you know, the upcoming days and months. Um, if I want to talk about the way I traveled, I can uh, say that I took the airplane just like any other person traveling from one country to another country. Uh, as I recall, it was a very bumpy flight. There were so many turbulences, but it was fine. I was fine. And uh, as soon as I got there, I, I felt a bit nervous because it was kind of a new experience for me and I had no idea what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. Uh, therefore, I uh, just decided to, decided to make some new friends and make this trip so I mean, unforgettable for myself. I would say that was a really unique experience because uh, I got the chance to meet people from different backgrounds and nationalities and uh, that was just wonderful, I can say. Yeah. So, I can also add that... Oh, thank you. That is the end. Okay. That is the end of What the, happened here? What happened there? She almost ran out of things to say. 
But then Manus remembered that she does have to speak for up to two and minutes. And he was still looking at me like, go on. Yes, I was like, please, just continue. You only have a few seconds left. So it is very important to complete the two minutes. She just about did it. All right, let's go into some details of okay. some useful techniques you use there. First of all, before I go into the uh, related topic, I'd like to say something I think is quite important for everyone. Now, even though Manus speaks English as a second language, she thinks in English when she wants to That's speak. It's really in important. Don't very important. translate his stuff. Never do that. Because, mm. guys, if, if, you, if English is not your mother tongue, okay, I probably wouldn't have that problem because English is my mother tongue. Yeah. But Menusha, on the other hand, she, you know, she thinks in English and she speaks in English. So when you're, when you're doing that, your structures are going to be more correct and yeah. fixed. If you're thinking in your mother tongue, trying to translate, oh goodness me, how am I going to say that in English? You're going to give your brain an extra burden and it's going to come out wrong because different languages have different structures of yeah, grammar. So you wouldn't be able to use the correct expressions and collocations not and the examiner all. wouldn't really understand what you say. And you're definitely not going to sound natural or coherent. So that's a very important yeah. point. And so what, what is your suggestion for those who want to just think in English. A very good point there. How do you think in English and not think in your mother tongue? Before the test, I would say, listen to a podcast in yeah, English. That's right. Practice, is that a good yeah, thing? You can warm up your mind. Warm up your mind and then practice a few phrases, perhaps complicated ones too, if, if you feel comfortable doing that. Yes. So you warm up your brain to think and speak in English and English only. Yeah, and you can also watch a lot of movies, listen to podcasts, not only before the test, but also maybe some years or some months or some days That's before right. the exam. It will just help you think in that language. You would, yeah, you're going to naturally think in English rather than your mother yeah. tongue. So that's that's very something very important to okay. think about. Anything else you would okay. like to? Oh, there's me. a lot of things I like to say about okay. your two-minute talk. Now I know you're a bit tired today, but you know you still you stayed focused, and you know what I love the way you uh, used complex vocabulary related okay. to the actual topic. At the same time, you were paraphrasing and you were basically proving to the examiner mm -hmm. how, how complicated you can get and showing off your wide range of vocabulary. So yes. that will definitely raise your And complicated, score. you know, complicated structure, complicated sentence does not necessarily mean a long sentence. No. Because sometimes the problem is that many candidates, Samson, when we are holding mock tests, yes. they're trying to use complex structures. So yeah. they think, okay, I should make this long sentence. And because they are not really good at grammar or like yes. complex structures, they forget about the first part of the sentence and they do not manage to do that. I would suggest for people who are doing that, think more about your story and the bullet points and think about maybe off topics, something that can keep you going rather than trying to structure an extremely long sentence that you're not comfortable with. So as Menj was talking about long sentences and phrases, that's something I'd like to talk about here. She used lovely details. She, she kept going into her details and elaborating on her story. That's something that the examiner is very much going to like. Yeah, but like I talked about the moment I was at the airport, it wasn't really necessary, necessary to talk about that. But since I didn't really have you know, many ideas to talk about and I was just a bit worried not to be able to cover all the bullet points. I went off the topic and also I tried to use some collocations related to flights and airports. Right flight and the actual travel and she did that yeah. quite successfully mm -hmm. and when you were actually running out of something to say you did come up with your subtopic so she did have a topic ready, an off topic to mm -hmm. carry on talking about or something that's branching off from the main thing. Okay. Yes, that's right. Okay. And uh, Samson, how about the pronunciation? Do you have anything to say about that? Like, should I speak slower or faster? I think you were going at a pretty much good enough pace. Mm -hmm. If you went a little bit slower, I would say you'd come out of the natural intonation and the coherent way of speaking. So I think the speed was very much controlled. It wasn't too mm -hmm. fast and it wasn't too slow. So yeah. uh, nice one. Thumbs and up to you. Something, thank you. Something happened at the end. What happened? I had a few seconds left. You did. But I stopped because I was all already done with the speaking. So but you, you did. How you, about that? I, well, yeah. 
You know, when you, if you do that, that's not a good thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, Manish does have a lot of things to say. Like I said, she would have an, an off topic. I think she was trying to demonstrate what would happen if someone actually did that. So don't. So when that happens, you shouldn't stop, okay? Don't stop. Yeah, because you see that the examiner is waiting for more ideas and more words. You can just look at him or look at her and then go on talking and don't worry because the examiner will stop you when the time the is two over. Is over. Yep. That's so. his job or her job is to look at the time. That's not yours. If you're the candidate, just think about your story. Don't get mm -hmm. distracted, guys. And what happens if the uh, candidate does not cover the two minutes? I mean, you're going to be marked down. Yeah, especially not in vocabulary. Good especially in vocabulary and also fluency and coherence because yes. that means yes. you, you, you cannot go on. Is it, mm -hmm. It's very important to keep going. Yes, that's right. All right, so is it my turn now? It is, finally. Finally, it's my turn, we, okay. We analyzed my, uh, you know, speaking a lot. Oh, we, we went into huge details there, but know. it was necessary. Now I let's think. see what we can do about okay. his cue card. So you can pick one. Lucky dip, here we go. Oh, I've got something here. Uh, yep, there's a few topics in here, but okay, I've got one. Uh, can you read that out for me, sure. please? Thank you very much. Describe an exciting competition or a sporting event you have witnessed. You know what? I'm not in the mood to go for another cue card today. I'm not in the mood. I'm going to skip that one. Okay, now you can pick another one. I'm allowed to pick another one. Yes. So, okay, maybe just give me a chance. Do you want to pick another one or you don't want to talk about it because if you skip this one, I can ask you a personal question. But if you don't really want to pick any more cue cards, then I would have another penalty for you. No, no, no. It's, it's just it's too embarrassing. I don't want to go for another personal question. Okay, okay. Another cue card. Here we okay. go. Okay, I'm just going to pick one. That was a there. threat, you know. That was a threat. Okay, here, we, here comes another one. I hope I can talk this time. Okay. Read that out for me. Can I, can I okay. talk about it? Describe a place to visit in your country. I feel the no? same. I feel the same way. I don't want to. I, I'm not in the mood today. I'll be honest. I'm not in the mood to talk for two minutes. Okay. We hadn't faced this situation no, before. No, we haven't. Like Did, two cue cards, rejecting two cue cards. Are you still going to give me a penalty for that? <sighs> a different penalty, not a personal question, Samson. Right, that sounds scary. It's not a personal question, but it is an. What is it? How about holding a mock test with you? I would be the examiner like I am with so many other candidates and you would be a candidate. Not like this game, a real mock test. A real mock test in yeah. this IELTS speaking? What do you think, guys? What do you that think about that? That would be interesting. Uh, I have to do it. You're it's, always the one. Yeah, I'm always the one yeah, the examiner, judging people, being the examiner. Now you will be evaluated by me. Now, Mandra, she's going to give me a mock test, guys. So stay tuned for that. Like and subscribe. and. Uh, you can comment underneath and see what's going to happen to me in this yes, mock test. Yes, and wait for that. Don't miss the mock test. That's my penalty. I have to follow the rules. So stick with us and make sure you watch that one. I'll see you next time. See you soon.